Hey folks, Seth Liebson here. It's that time of year again. Guns Etc. huge anniversary event. This year it's on Saturday, October 24th only. There'll be tons of giveaways and one day only discounts in the store. Over the years, this event has turned into a gathering of folks who love America and the right to bear arms. As you know, our world may dramatically change on November 3rd. Can you imagine what a Biden-Harris administration will do to the Second Amendment then? If you're concerned about that, make sure you visit Guns Etc. on Saturday, October 24th. For more information, go to GunsEtc.com. And if you like these monologues, please subscribe to 960 The Patriots' YouTube channel. Tuesday, October 27th, 2020, right off the top of the show, right off the top of the hour. It is a delight to welcome back to the show Laura Trump. She is the daughter-in-law of the President of the United States and a spokesman for the Trump re-election campaign. Laura, welcome back to our airwaves. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Great to be with you. Your family, your husband was here, I guess, yesterday. I think the president's coming again tomorrow. Your family's spending a lot of time in Arizona. We're delighted to have you. Um, Before we get into Arizona specifically, um, a week out of the election, tell us just broadly speaking uh, where you see this election and where you see the stakes of this election. Well, the the stakes couldn't be higher. Um, Obviously, we know that there are two very different candidates running uh, for president of the United States with two very different visions for the future of America. On one hand, You have President Donald Trump, who has a proven track record of success for the American people, a man that has revitalized the American dream and brought it back, has given us, you know, the great economic highs, the likes of which we haven't seen in, in, you know, decades in America, the lowest unemployment numbers in uh, the history of America in many respects, Um, ending endless wars, rebuilding our military, trade uh, deals, you know, bringing peace to the Middle East. These are all things that in less than four years Donald Trump has accomplished for the people of this country. And then you can contrast that on the other side with Joe Biden, a guy who's been in politics for his entire life for 47 years, um, has never held a real job before, um, much different than President Trump, and has yet to deliver anything substantive for the American people, although he's spent almost five decades in politics. He has now been pushed incredibly far left. He is advocating to implement socialist policies in America, things that would bankrupt our country and make us unrecognizable as the United States of America. So uh, they couldn't be any different, um, but I I think the stakes are very high. But I'll tell you, we feel very confident. Uh, We feel great about the American people. We know they're very smart. We saw in 2016 all the polling said that Donald Trump had no shot at winning. We know that they were wrong, and I believe they are very wrong now as well. Um, but look, we, we are very confident, but we're not cocky about it, and we're not taking anything for granted. We are out, spread out all across the country. I was out in Arizona last week, and we're working hard for every single vote, and it's a very different scene than what you'll see on the other side of the Biden campaign, where Joe Biden almost didn't even come out of his house yesterday, um, eight days away from a presidential election. So we feel great, but we're going to work every second until this thing is locked up for President Trump on November 3rd. Good. I, I think that's the right perspective. I, I, I've been saying we need to be personally or intellectually optimistic, but, you know, act, act pessimistically, act as act as if we're down because we don't want to take anything for granted. But you're right to Laura Trump in what you're observing um, as as you know, someone who's kind of looked at a lot of this history. I've never seen anything like what we're seeing on both sides. These spontaneous rallies rallies uh, on behalf of the president's reelection, not organized by the campaign. Hundreds, indeed, in cases, thousands of people honking, lining up their cars, coming out on street corners. We get it here in Phoenix. I get callers talking about it. We've seen the reports out of places like Pennsylvania and New Jersey. On the one hand, and on the other, Joe Biden, who does announce campaign events, and you get something like maybe 20 people, including the media, at these things. And I just got to think, this is unprecedented, as I say, in both cases, there's something in the American spirit that wants something about energy and action. And you get that with your father-in-law. You get quite a different picture from the other side. But as you also rightly point out, with the other side, you get something else. You, you don't only get the, the lackadaisical looking down at the shoes um, perspective. 
you do get this large dose, very large dose of socialism that you never saw presidential candidates embrace before. Those are the stakes we try to communicate, yeah? Oh, absolutely. And it can't be overstated. I mean, really, what is on the line here is America. And and we don't want to give this country up. You know, once we lose our freedoms, they are not easily regained. Uh, America is only one generation away. Our freedom is only one generation away from extinction. We know that Ronald Reagan said that. And I think those words have never been truer than they are right now. And um, it's really frightening to see some of the ideas, whether you're talking about hacking the court or eliminating energy jobs um, that that Joe Biden has talked about doing. I mean, it would change America forever. And I'll tell you, having two kids, I have two young kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, I want them to grow up in the same America that I got to grow up in because I knew even as a kid that this was the greatest country in the world, and I was so proud to be an American. And I think that's what's on the line right now. It is as as a country now as a state as as you were pointing out your family had including your father in law spent a lot have been spending a lot of time here speak directly to Arizonans the kinds of things you talk about when you're in Arizona the kinds of things that resonate with Arizona voters. Well, I have one of my best friends that actually lives in Scottsdale, and uh, look, I, I don't think you can overstate the economy for folks. I think that. Um, As we're coming out of a global pandemic, you need to know that you have someone in the White House who understands the economy, understands how to get it up and running. This president has very clearly said that he wants more tax cuts. Uh, He wants to, you know, deregulate even further. He wants to remove restrictions from small businesses so that they can get back up and running. We can get people back to work. We can safely get kids back in school. We want to get back to some semblance of normalcy. Uh, I think, you know, in Arizona, as as well as in, in many states in the Southwest, you know, immigration is a very big issue as well. And this president has stated very clearly time and time again that we are a country of immigrants, but it has to be done legally. Uh, that is why, you know, you have seen him be, take a very strong stand on illegal immigration. And, and it affects all uh, our lives in all different ways, whether you're talking about, you know, drug trafficking or human trafficking. Um, It's very detrimental to this country to have open borders, and yet that is something that Joe Biden has said he wants. Uh, It's very frightening to to think, especially for Arizonans, the implications of an election like this. Um, But but look, I think at the end of the day, we all want to know we live in a safe and secure community. And President Trump, unlike any other president, has stood beside law enforcement and and said very clearly that he is the, the law and order president. And if you don't have safety and security, uh, in your communities, really nothing else matters. So that is at the forefront of this election as well. And I think people can very clearly see that. I think they've seen the the sad uh, state of so many Democrat-run cities across America that have not accepted the help of the president and the you know federal troops coming in to quell violence in their cities, looting, rioting. Um, people want safety, security, and they, they want to live a, a, a great life, and that's what's at stake right now, but that's what President Trump is offering. We're talking with Laura Trump. Laura, exactly right, and aside from you and maybe your husband and your brother-in-law, no one knows the president as well as you do, and you, you didn't start as a political family in the way that so many other uh people questioning the presidency or who have served as president were in politics. And what's amazing to listening to you, listening to your whole family, is you say these things, you make the case that you've just made, and you make it a lot, so crystal clear, so crystal clear in a way that you do not hear the Democrats talk about. They, you know, shade around the issues. They have a lot of ifs, ands, or buts. They have a lot of qualifications. They have a lot of self-corrections and a lot of denials about things they said. I think what's what explains it, and you tell me, what explains it is you folks have seen this from 50,000 feet as well as on the ground, and it does come back to not Republican, Democrat, so much as, folks, America's in Big trouble here if we go the other way. You can see it on the streets, you know. Portland may be Portland today, but it could be Scottsdale tomorrow, and it could be Dallas the next day, right? No, that's exactly right. And and we do have a unique perspective as a family. (laughs) You rightly point out none of us were ever involved in politics. Uh, But I think the reason this president ran was because he saw the country going in a frightening direction. I think he knew you needed an outsider, someone that wasn't reliant on Washington, D.C., lobbyists, special interest groups, and quite frankly, the swamp, 
to come in and clean those things up. That's why I think they hate him so much. That's why they fight him every single day uh, because he's doing a great job exposing them. And uh, he doesn't play the game they want him to play. He works on behalf of the American people, period, no matter what. Uh, And it it really is uh, all on the line right now as we head towards November 3rd. There's something about a patriotism, isn't there, Laura, that you have uh, either grown to appreciate or grew up with in your bones, where you guys are willing to take the slings and arrows on behalf of a cause. We all talk about being involved in causes greater than our own self-interest. This is it, though, isn't it? This is what the Trump family has been involved in for the last four years and looking forward to in the next four years. You don't see it more in sharp relief than you do with your family. I got to tell you, it's a marvel to behold. And I just I just thank you guys for doing it. But that's true, isn't it? I mean, this is truly about a cause greater than yourselves. You guys aren't you guys aren't doing this for the good press, are you? <laughs> well, I mean, if we got any press at all, that was good. I, it would shock all of us. Uh, no, listen, I, I think we all realized from early on this was so much bigger than any of us. Yeah. And the reality is that when you're a good person and you do the right thing, um, I think you know that, and that's ultimately what matters. And I've always operated under the assumption that um, the truth ultimately comes out. And, yep. and look, it may not happen in, in our lifetime or as soon as we want, but I do think that, that the truth comes out about our family at, at some point. So they're welcome to say all the negative things they want about us now. Um, we know we're fighting for the greater good. We know we're fighting for the future of America, and it's an honor, quite frankly, to do it. I can't think of anything more important. Laura, God bless. We're pulling up our socks and running with you. We may be right behind you, but we are right behind you. Godspeed to you, Laura. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your effort. We appreciate your family so very, very much. Thank you.